This is a quick how-to video on adding a WeBoost system for uh, cell phone boosting when you're RVing. Uh, I'm going to leave out a few steps along the way. We're basically going to pick it up where after I've already drilled the hose. A lot of this stuff comes with the actual kit. The kit comes with a, a drill bit and a, quite a few other things that help you get this installed into your RV. I also have the uh, antenna already installed on the top of the camper as this video starts. So that's just a quick clamp that clamps up there on the actual ladder. Uh, this can be done in different ways depending on what kind of camper you have. Um, I hope this helps you out a little bit as far as putting in the system for your particular RV. Uh, it's a little nerve-wracking when you're actually trying to uh, drill into your camper. And like I say, if you have slides where you can go in through a slide or you can go in through a window opening and not make a hole in the side of your camper, it's probably the best. But this didn't work out for me. All right, you'll see here's where I installed the box that actually has the booster. And uh, I've got I know what, I read my wires that got to be run through this hole here. And it comes through here, you'll see where I've already drilled a hole and put the cable through to there. And this is my little closet area. And uh, on the back side, you'll see the light shining through where I've drilled the hole from the back side. So uh, I'm gonna put my extra cable inside of this, this area. And this is the actual drill bit that I used for the um, drilling in the back that came, comes with the actual Wii Boost system. Well, it makes you pretty nervous drilling in the side of a brand new camper, but if you're going to do your Wii Boost, you got to do something. And if you have slides, you can go in that way, but this camper here had no other access, so it comes with a nice little device here to seal it off, so I'm hoping that works out well. Now, my setup here is kind of a pain with the uh, we boost system they have this little thing that cable comes out <clears throat> has three little screws they're tiny screws and in my case my Aztel actually has a has a fiberglass on this outside it has a little bit of a metal shell so I had to take a drill bit very small drill bit you can see here and I uh, just don't want to go oversized but just right at that edge and uh, drill that hole pilot hole right there and that allowed that that thread still th threaded in but it goes through that piece of metal on the inside this is on the outside here so we're going to use a couple of the tie strips that came with it and secure it all back here and we're almost done on the outside so coming in my bathroom closet here i I actually I didn't want to cut any of the wiring. I'd like to just keep the splices as is if I ever need that much cable. So I just secured it using the zip ties and the, the attachment points that were provided in the Wii Boost. And uh, you see back there, that's where the uh, comes out of the outside, comes in there. I might put some, some kind of sealant around that to keep that foam from, styrofoam from coming out of there. And two zip ties set up there. This goes through the wall and goes into the kitchenette area. So this is sitting in my driveway without the Wii Boost. And I'm getting the two bars. And they're usually pretty strong out here. I can still send a lot of data and everything else. So I'm not sure how this test is going to work out here. Actually just dropped the one bar. So we're going to test it. Antenna's about uh, maybe a foot and a half away, so we'll see how that works out. Now, I just tested it, and uh, as you can see, we barely got, we were two bars, maybe one bar before, and I just turned on the Wii Boost, and it shot up to, I got three bars, and I get close to that, it may even shoot up to, yeah, it's still at three bars. Sometimes you can, you can take this, and you can, go in airplane mode and then reset it and it'll even get a better setup so pretty pleased with that boost and signal uh, that's something that's not too important here in my driveway at the house 
but when I get out I think it's gonna make a big difference so with my e-pro or I should say my this is the e-pro or this is actually a geo pro camper small 20 footer camper I've added this WeBoost system and when I've done here I can say I have this whip antenna that I can do pretty much what I want with it I can just set it over here on the counter if I want I can bring it over here so I'm just gonna give that I'm gonna disconnect that when we're not in use and, uh, and then uh, it'll work out pretty good we can even find a way maybe to run it down to the door if we're outside get a good signal out there so uh, so my systems right right in here in this corner there it is got the power supply coming off the uh, 110 now but I can add on it I got an adapter for it goes to 12 volt on that so that's going to set up in there kind of showed you already it's going to go through my it goes through my bathroom through the closet but plenty of wire there and it comes down that back where I showed you so pretty simple to install just a few odds and ends just to make sure it doesn't leak or anything and uh, I think it's going to work out well and we'll try to give you some ideas of how well that works and we only have one or two bars and maybe if, sometimes they say even if you barely have a signal you can get some uh, enough to send a few data or maybe even get a phone call so that's about all I got for this install hope this helped out somebody that's thinking about installing one of these these are not cheap systems for sure so you really need to know if you want the you really want a cell phone this is the way to go but it's not a cheap system this system here is made for RVs and it's uh, upwards of five hundred dollars so it's what you what you want and when you're out and what kind of communication you want.